Well, hello there again, friends. Today is 4-27-2022, and today is the Odin Project Vlog Day 99. And so today I completed number two in 2 sub-A, um, and uh, I may have been a little bit of overthinking there um, on this one for today. Um, the reason why I say that is because I believe that what this is saying, and we'll go over it, is saying it's just kind of like, get your structure set up, get your modules set up, and we'll do wiring in the next steps. Because I was trying to start doing uh, wiring stuff up um, after I did some pseudocode and, and then got some things on the on the editor. But I was reading down in the uh, next sections, and that's where it talks about, you know, building the logic and, you know, pulling things in together and, and making things work together. And so I feel like we're not quite there yet. So with that said, um, let's just get started. And I preamble that just to let you know, we're just going to do some uh, some module and some factory um, pattern setup today. So it says, you're going to store the game board as an array inside of a game board object. So start there. Your players are also going to be stored as objects, and you're probably going to want an object to control the flow of the game itself. A. Your main goal here is to have, a, have as little global code as, global code as possible. Try tucking everything away inside of a module or a factory. Rule of thumb, if you only ever need one of something, game board, display controller, use a module. If you need multiples of something, like players, uh, create them with factories. So I made a note of that in my, um, obviously you can't see my notes, but I made a note here that said module is does one thing and factory does multiple things or creates duplication. And so in module I have in my notes here, my pseudocode is game board and, and then um, it will be an object as an array. And then I have display controller as an object, and then I have players as an object, and players object is a factory. So module again will be game board and display controller, and uh, <coughs> pardon my trets there, and um, object as an array, and factory will be players as an object on the factory. So um, let's get into the code. So like I said, not too much going on here, and actually I did a lot of uh, to-do commenting. I don't do a lot of that. Probably should d get better about doing that, but when there was a, something I was thinking of in the moment, I created a to-do uh, for myself for later down the road so I don't forget, and we'll get there. We'll get to that here in a minute. So at the top, we have a uh, first thing is we got a game board module, and the game board module, if you remember, is uh, it said game board object, and we're going to have a game board array inside of it. So I just called things what they're calling it, and I put the you know the moniker module after it just for my sake, so I know that uh, that that particular variable is a module. So what we have here is they declared a variable called game board module, and that takes on uh, calls a local function, uh, anonymous function, and then in, inside of the anonymous function we have uh, declared a uh, uh, a game board um, as an empty array for now. We'll fill it later, but for now we're just kind of getting the getting the um, the framework set up, so to speak. And then return uh, curly braces is empty for now. So the this is the basically the bare. And then you have the uh, the end uh, curly brackets quote or uh, parentheses, and then a second. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. And then a second set of uh, parentheses to, in, and if you remember uh, from the last uh, video, um, we talked about uh, that does that that empty set there does an immediate invocation of the function. So that's what the mo that's ba this is basically the structure of how to set up a module, and that's how uh, I set up display controller as well. Uh, net below, but I don't have anything to return here because I wasn't sure where I was going with it quite yet. Like I said, this stuff's not. Uh, I feel like today was more about getting the thinking about where to put your code and thinking about the structure and how to lay things out more so than wiring things up, and that's why I started the the today's video with a with a little description of that because here I don't have a return statement, but the curly braces. 
uh, will allow me to return um, a object or a uh, a function um, outside you know to make that a public because as right now as you know game board as we've discussed before game board here as it sits is a is a private um, privately declared array uh, so if I wanted to make it public I would uh, publicly available I would put it in here like that and that's why it now it's light blue um, but I'm not gonna do that right now because I'm not sure that's what I want to do so we're just gonna leave it like that um, because we haven't really discussed any of that and haven't read about it but it is coming up the second one is setting up the display controller module again the same format is uh, the previous module uh, except I did a little bit of a, a test in here and uh, I'll show you uh, what I was just playing around with and we'll go through that in a minute um, <coughs> excuse me uh, so I have a display controller module uh, dis, um, declared here and that takes on another anonymous function that runs the uh, testf uh, um, function that does a console log testing private function call inside of a module object and then returns testf uh, outside uh, publicly and then uh, we here we have this is the setting up the player factory function so this is a factory function it looks pretty similar except you'll notice right away it doesn't have the second set of quotes at the end or um, parentheses sorry if I keep saying quotes I meant parentheses so that means there won't be an immediate invocation of anything in here and you'll also notice that create player is a function um, and not a a uh, variable so we're kind of this is kind of a you know kind of like a uh, setting up an object as we learned except we're using a factory function so I create I created a, a function called create player and it takes on pl uh, parameters a player name player number and assigned XO this can change and it probably will but it's just me forward thinking a little bit on the player factory function arrow function so we're going to anonymously uh, call the function um, as you can see there in the tooltip which is nicely there uh, displayed there we're going to create an object that has the player name the player number the assigned XO and uh, for fun uh, for playing I put a get player name in there which does nothing more than uh, this block of code right here so if you run get player name it's going to get the player name and it's going to return a console.log. Um, this is the name of player, player, you know, the player number plus the player name. Um, <clears throat> and then at the return will be get player name. Again, I, I may take this out, but this is just playing in here just to see if I get it to work. And it does work. So this returns get player name as a property, but it's also internally, it's a uh, function. So you can uh, run functions in uh, it, the function for that is globally ex uh, accessible, I should say. Player name, player number, and assigned XO is accessible. And then, and then I have a to do down here. Uh, create inputs for name and assigned XO, asking them for their preference. Maybe a pop up message box. And what I mean there is. Um, down the road when it says to create the uh, interface. Uh, we'll ask them for their name, maybe like a pop-up box asking for their name, and then asking them assigned XO could be a thing where we ask them, do you want to be X or you want to be O? Um, just something I might think about uh, doing, not sure yet. So that's why I put it on there as a to-do, um, and maybe do that as a pop-up as well. Another to-do, do I need to assign player numbers? I put it in there just because, because as you guys know with Tic-Tac-Toe, you only have two players. <laughs> So, at least in the traditional sense of the game. So, it might not be necessary to have player one and player two, but it's something for me to write as a to-do to check later because I don't want to add unnecessary code. But it may be necessary because I may be calling, I may have a point where I'm having to, you know, call the player and I'm going to, you know, index it as player one and player two. We'll see. Because um, that might be easier to maneuver with than... Um, you know using a string name because the names can change so as you can see down here I created two test people since I don't have an interface to input 
I created uh, Justin, which is create player, Justin, and then comma one. So Justin is the name, one is the player number, and uh, X is the string for the assigned XO. And James is another player, a second player, and is O, assigned O. So that's how that works. So if we hit the browser here, um, you can do uh, the way that's set up now. We can we can look up uh, properties on Justin since we define Justin. Um, so that's pretty cool. So we can t it'll tell us everything about Justin that that's pulling from that uh, create person. So we have assigned XO as X. His player name's Justin and his player number's one. We can do the same thing for James. And James comes up as signed uh, XO as O. Player name is James. Player number is two. And we can get objects uh, properties for other things too. Like get, uh, we can do um, game board module, I believe. And there's its object. And it has nothing in it right now because we haven't defined anything. Uh, but it has that uh, disabled prototype there, and then we can um, uh, we can't do a define we can't do an object on pl create player because create player itself is not an object; it's a function. So if we try doing that here, we will uh, believe we will. No, we didn't get an error. Okay, so it just spits out that it's a function, and it spits out uh, the. Uh, create player function that it is um, through that anonymous call through the arrow so <clears throat> okay so there's that and then we can do um, other things too um, like we can um, uh, we can do get player name but because get player name is uh, is uh, now globally available we can't do it off player name uh, because I don't believe you can't call a uh, like you can't do create well, our time typing you can't do a, a f call a function from a to a function I don't think um, it'll give you an error and then uh, see so get because it's a get player name but yeah type error it's not a function it's not seeing it as a function it's seeing it as a at that moment, it's seeing it as a parameter, uh, as a property, but it's actually a fun. It turns in. It's inside a function, so it's a basically a local function. So you can't do anything with that. Uh, so how you'd use that is you do Justin dot uh, because we're loading in Justin as create player. So you can run it off the Justin because Justin's an object. Justin, you know, since create player is a function, uh, Justin is not. And Justin points to create player, so you could do Justin dot get player name, and that will run. Oh, you gotta make sure you put your uh, parentheses in there. So we run that as a function, and there it's running. This is the name of player one, Justin, which that console dot log that I showed you before, uh, right there. And then the test f, we could try doing the same thing. Um, so we could do uh, before we do that, we could do James as well. So James dot um, get player name. This is name name of player two, James. And so if we try doing um, display control module dot test f as a function. It does run a testing private function call inside of a module. Um, that works, unlike the doing that with create player. As I was saying, this works because um, display controller module is not a ver. It's not. It's a variable, not a function. Uh, and because because it's set up as a module, versus this is set up as a factory function. So create player is the factory function. So you can't call a function on a function, but you can call a uh, a variable on a function so that's why this does work display control modular dot test f and I believe you it won't work right if you 
yeah, so if you forget the parentheses, it just gives you a, uh, basically it, it gives you the properties of testf um, and just tells you that it is a function. Um, so there's that. And so that's how that works. And so I'll be getting rid of testf because I've just thrown it in there just for um, demonstration purposes and showing you how that work how it works for test how test stuff works for display control module but doesn't necessarily work for get player name uh, until you you know put in a uh, you know an actual object and not a um, not a function so that is that and I think that's all I wanted to cover today so keeping it short and sweet um, Next time, we'll be going into three, setting up the HTML and write in JavaScript function that will render the contents of the game board. So we're going to start doing a little bit of wiring in. Um, today is uh, Wednesday. Again, I, I, I keep repeating myself just because I wanted you guys to stay uh, afloat of on my uh, schedule and what, what's going on. So again, I'm going vacation next week. I'm not sure if I, I will try to see if I can get three done, but if I don't, then this may be the last video for a little while, till at least probably after uh, the t uh, May 10th uh, when I return. So if you don't see a video from me in a while, that's probably why. Um, otherwise, I will try to do three and um, crank this one out, and then probably likely will be done for... Uh, until after May 10th on on that one so so we'll see so with all that said um, please like share and subscribe for more content and uh, let me know in the comments uh, how you guys are doing so far with uh, tic-tac-toe um, project and uh, getting things set up and uh, trying to trying to be more modular with your code and uh, not not exposing too many things to global and not setting things at global like really we only have two things set at global here it's these two right here everything else is tucked away nicely inside a module or a factory function and so that's the main that's the main goal and exercise of tic-tac-toe is to keep everything modular and um, and succinct and keep things off global so you don't have namespace issues and performance issues so with all that said until next time see ya